So we'll move on straight now to Ishbel, uh, Ishbel Shand, um, uh, who I, I know is going to aim to speak for five minutes. And um, I think that will probably be what she'll do. So thanks, Ishbel, very much for joining us. Hello, and thanks, Mike. So my name is Ishbel Shand, and I'm going to speak about hydrogen and Aberdeen. So Aberdeen's fortunes wax and wane with the price of Brent crude. The oil industry and its supply chains are major employers in the city. Most of the city region deal money for economic development was spent on supporting oil and gas the year after 196 countries signed up to the Paris Agreement. The oil industry's primary motivation is to make money for its shareholders. Aberdeen's politicians want to stay in power and to maintain well-paid jobs in the city. Speaking out against oil in interests is not an election winner here. The really big questions, what is the most efficient and cost-effective way to decarbonise our economy? How can we best harness the skills of oil and gas workers to achieve decarbonisation? And what is in the best long-term interests of the public? are not the main considerations here. Hydrogen is being strongly promoted. Jacob Rees-Mogg's described it as a magic bullet. National Plan work frame, Planning Framework 4 sees it as the future for the city and the shire. The council has a 240 million pound agreement with BP for a hydrogen hub. We risk replacing fossil fuel dependency with hydrogen dependency. The Scotland Gas Network's Aberdeen Vision proposes using steam methane reformation to produce hydrogen with the carbon dioxide captured and stored offshore via the Shell GoldenEye pipeline. Shell avoids decommissioning costs. The Scottish taxpayer buys the pipeline and takes on all future liabilities. The hydrogen then gets mixed with the methane and pumped to Aberdeen via the SGN gas grid. Now, this is just madness. This is not about decarbonisation. This is about repurposing assets to prevent them becoming stranded and transferring liabilities from the private to the public sector. The plan to create a, a local hydrogen market by using it for domestic heating will plunge many of Aberdeen's citizens into fuel poverty. The Aberdeen offshore wind farm was built with public subsidies and is run by Vattenfall, who got £9.3 million from the UK government to put desalination equipment and an electrolyzer onto one of its turbines and build a hydrogen pipeline to a seven ton hydrogen storage facility. The proposed site, Greg Ness, is currently used as a construction site for the Aberdeen South Harbour. There was a legal requirement to reinstate the land and return it to public use when the harbour was complete. The Vattenfall plan followed discussion with the oil billionaire Sir Ian Wood's Energy Transition Zone Limited Company and Aberdeen Harbour Board. Electricity from the wind farm is currently transmitted two and a half kilometres to the shore. Why are they proposing taking a pipeline 15 kilometres to the south, passing directly across the mouth of two large harbours and putting seven tonnes of explosive material in close proximity to a railway line, the coast road and tourists on cruise ships? Where is the market for the hydrogen? There are no carbon intensive industries in Aberdeen. This project will have a high environmental impact and carry a lot of risk. The stream scheme is projected to last only eight to 10 years. It will result in no meaningful advance in knowledge and comes at a significant cost to the public purse. The electricity used in offshore hydrogen production will likely be substituted by electricity produced by fossil fuels. So what's behind this irrationality? Is offshore hydrogen generation partially about government and oil companies attempting to avoid the expense of decommissioning 
North Sea oil and gas infrastructure. The Scottish Offshore Wind Council report of last year, repurposing oil and gas infrastructure would suggest so. This is not about a just transition or a move towards net zero. This is just business as usual with greenwashing on steroids. Find more about our campaign to save the green spaces in Torrey, the poorest area in the north of Scotland, at saint.fittick.torrey.com. Thank you.